no one say anything frivolous for the next few moments. I am having a significant experience. This painting is called No Peace and Vanity. I bypassed this concept set so many times because I was underwhelmed by the idea of it as a painting. I didn't include teeth, but the teeth are coming. Next week, in my next painting, look forward to seeing teeth. I promise myself. I wanted to be loyal to the concept. Good lord, my words. Ugh. Although... This concept sketch, like, really had my conscience in a chokehold. So I gave in and was made a fool yet again because I flowed the whole painting. Like, literally, I flew through it like the dead travel fast. <laughs> I think the music I listened to while working on it really helped, at least in the beginning. It's towards the end. I, I got into YouTube and, ooh, ooh, I messed myself up. Ooh, gotta protect your energy, really do. Um, but I started musically with How Can I Ease the Pain by Lisa Fisher. I love that. It's very much Quiet Storm. Love it. Love it. Love it. I did that on repeat roughly three times because I loved it so many times. That's why I said it three times, I guess. <laughs> then Final Breath and Love Me As I Am by Paloma Faith. I, I really appreciate her artistry. Then I went to In Love in Vain by Nina Simone. Yes, if you watch my other videos, I, I, bring, I keep bringing up Nina Simone. It's just the theme. With this song, In Love in Vain, she really embodies an idea Kareem Belly Ray described where the instruments are in conversation, communicating, while also telling the song. Her voice interacts with the piano in like an antagonistic yet reciprocal way. That It really is. It's really communication. And it really brings the song to life in a way I doubt any other artist could. Or would dare to. Ugh, I, I love experimentation and things. It's just like, oh yeah, mm, what is that? Dip, dabble, all of that. Then I went back to Paloma Faith, still around. And then I closed it off with Shoop by Whitney Houston, which is basically like going to church. You know, it's like, who needs church when there's, there's Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey? You hear it. You hear the church in it. And I think that the elements of those songs and, like, the energy of them very much translated into this painting. And it was blessed. It was blessed. I really think that. Uh, I, I, I back to this painting. I love it. I love it so much. Everything jumps out and screams at me in a lovely, lovely, lovely way. There's so much depth in the positioning of the body. The pose is so dynamic. It's the one thing I did tweak from the concept the leg that was extended behind the body, it's, it's just poking out now, you know, it's like, hello. Not to mention the foot nearest to the screen. The foot was rendered so well, in my opinion. I really should have taken a picture of it. I hope I hope somehow I can edit in, like, a zoom sort of thing so you can really see what that foot looked like, because it's glorious. It's great. It looked great to me. Abstraction really has helped me better render realism, albeit on accident. Still, it, it was a very good foot. The best foot I've ever done. I love drawing painting fingers and hands if you can't tell so including including feet is is new territory um but the fingers the fingers convey something as well i really love what i did with the fingers too it's like every detail of this is really really wonderful um this is literally all i've ever wanted my art to look like it's wild one thing about this though is the colors they are dark I'm attributing that to the time and season shift because um, at the time I'm filming this, it's November 3rd. You'll see this probably in February, late January, February, February. Um, but also the seasonal shift, like I said, um, I've recently acquired a new selection of like paint, but they, they're quite varied, but they're all, they all were like darker in pigmentation, which I love. Anywho, that's not, that's not super important. You'll see later, I teetered back and forth about filling the void in the torso in with color. And I think, had I not, like, done what I did with the black, which you'll see, um, I probably would have left that void open. But I, I filled it with blue. And that's, that's a great segue. Blue. My love of blue and orbs of color. Most often yellow. And I think probably following a close close runner-up is blue. 
I think I might have done it with red in the past. I can't really remember. And this, you know, focus, focus. <laughs> I, I have a thing for blue. The blue orbs are mercury. And way back when, that's where I was getting at, I did actually, I think I actually did a painting, something mercury or mercurial. If I remember, it'll be on the screen. Or if I can find it, I should say. Mercury, mercury, um, oh, once upon a time, I did want a book of association, sort of like a witchy want, sort of a, a witchy acquisition, I believe. That's what my mind is wanting to say. Mercury is associated with Hermes, and Hermes traverses, transver transverses the worlds? Words, my god. Oh, it's just not today for me, no. <laughs> Birthday cards are the sun, the wheel of fortune, and magician. Hermes is a bit of, magi of a magician. He also, like, he really straddles the lines of worlds. Said that already. I identify with him. And then the yellow orbs from my previous painting, because I did that in um, the one before this, the one before this, Insight by Autopsy. The yellow orbs are anxiety and potential, which are sort of one and the same for me. The red, self-explanatory, passion. Also, the where I place the red in insight by feel slash autopsy i think it aligns with the sacral chakra i think it was yeah so i good coincidence i guess the green i identify as a plant a flower in the sky so growth green in this painting the mercury or blue is sort of a mirror yet also a sort of like a, a source of like scrying for the figure and yes i know mercury is poisonous other than my Venus sign being in Virgo, I don't really have any, like, planetary Mercury influence in my natal chart. If I'm, if what I understand of astrology is correct, my dominant planets are the Moon and Saturn, which I think that makes perfect sense. And then I think after that, it was Uranus, which also makes sense, because, ooh, wow. I think that's why I think I, like, adjacent to Mercury is, <laughs> like, Uranus. Anyway, um... Unless you count being a Libra of the third deacon, which is ruled by Gemini. And I think that correlation is, is it's really a stretch. Interestingly, with my, my um, Mercury persona chart, five of my planets are in seventh house. And the majority of those are either in Scorpio or Sagittarius. Just interesting to me, if you are deep into astrology, then I think maybe it'll make sense to you as well. Maybe that'll be interesting it's sort of a nightly habit to review my natal chart because i don't know i don't know her that well i get detached or like estranged from myself or like disassociate maybe through the day being alone you think that would help but no 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 that is not really the case so um if you take anything away from this it is truly art art truly thank you very much for watching consider liking and subscribing that is if you like torture. Okay, bye. King's guts, all that practicing, day in, day out. He was not motivated by the base aspects of humanity. He wanted to create his art, and that's all he cared about. He, he just wanted to, to make art that no one could see. That was his, his favorite thing to do.